and welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to go through your preferences the right way. I'm going to go to the preferences panel by getting to edit, preferences, and I'm going to do general. Notice the shortcut key is control K. Now, when you're inside the preferences panel, you can change a lot of the things that are set up in Photoshop and how the application works. For example, right here it says use shift key for tool switch. Well, if I uncheck that, I can just press uh, a double B, for example, to get to the brush tool. Let me show you what that's like. I'm going to click OK. And let's say I'm on this tool here and I press BB. You see how I'm switching? Okay. If I just press it once, let me go to H takes you to the hand tool, right? Let's go to the Z zoom tool, right? If I press B twice, you see it switches over to that secondary tool, the pencil tool. Now you can make it to where shift causes you to change between those when you do shift B or shift H, but you know, what's the point? I'm just going to leave it off. So I'm going to go back into my preferences. I'm going to press control K. So that's something I usually check off. Uh, you can make it to where the zoom resizes windows. Sometimes these types of things are inside the application. So let me show you what that's like. So this zoom resizes windows. I'm going to click OK for a second. If I'm on the zoom tool, I can say zoom all windows, right? Right. So anyway, some of these settings are related to each other, like related to tools and whatnot inside. I'm going to go ahead and click, click Control K to get back into my settings. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go down to interface, the next section. Now, these are for the three different modes you have. And when you press F, you can cycle through those modes, or you can use this little button up here to cycle through the different screen modes. You can choose the background color for the screen. Let me show you what that's like. If I change this standard screen mode from gray, I can choose a custom color of. And you see what it does? It creates the image around, or the color around my image is now that weird purpley color. I'm going to leave it at gray. Uh, you can have a drop shadow, or no drop shadow, or a line going around your picture. So, see right now there's a little shadow. I can tell it to be a line, or I can tell it to be none. Okay, so just, you know, a lot of this is personal preferences. Uh, you can... Uh, auto show hidden panels okay so like if you are going to a particular panel it'll pop it out um, you have default workspaces in case everything gets messed up and you don't have your workspaces up here uh, let me show you what these full screen mode looks like here for a second I'm gonna go ahead and click OK for a second I'm gonna press F you see now I'm in uh, mode and you notice that the bottom here is cut off uh, click it again you see you don't see any of the panels. They are there, but they're just hidden. Go ahead and press F again. So you can see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and click Control K again. So the interface is definitely something you can mess with. Uh, tool tips are pretty cool, but after a while, if they get in the way or get annoying, you can get rid of them. I'm going to go to File Handling. Uh, file Handling It's going to automatically save to the original folder, and it's going to use lowercase extensions. I like that. I'm going to go ahead and keep these set up. Now down here it says maximize PSD and PSB file compatibility. Now what this means is let's say you were to save this document as a PSD file. That's the Photoshop document. It's not a JPEG. It's its own document. And then you're going to give it to somebody that for some reason doesn't have the same version of Photoshop. Let's say they have an older version. Okay. What this does is this creates a duplicate of your image inside the file so that even if you have the wrong version of Photoshop, it'll open it up. Now, it does increase the file size because obviously you're, you're holding two copies of it. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to do never. Uh, if you are noticing problems with compatibility, you're working in a different version at home, uh, then maybe this is something you don't want to do. You can leave it on always or ask. But I'm just going to go ahead and put mine to never. 
I'm going to go over to performance and under performance you should see your video card listed here if you don't uh, sometimes it's just detecting a um, virtual video card or something and nothing's showing here but you really want it to detect your video card because if it doesn't you won't be able to do certain features uh, in the OpenGL interface for example uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK on this for a second and let's say I want to go to the hand tool and then I'm going to change it to the rotate view tool which is inside that tool I can rotate this image like this as I'm working one of the things that you can't do if it doesn't detect your video card so if I go to edit preferences and let's go back into performance if this is missing that feature will say there's something wrong and that's just one of them but that's one of the ways you know whether or not your video card is being detected properly uh, you can also tell it to use more of the uh, GL, OpenGL settings to make it do more stuff. I'm going to go ahead and put it in advanced mode and click OK. I'm going to click down to cursors. Um, the cursors change. Okay. For example, if I'm on a brush tool, it's going to show me the normal brush tip, which will tell me that if I do full size, notice it's a little bigger. It shows the fuzziness of the brush stroke. You can also put a show a crosshair in the middle of it, okay? A show only crosshair while painting, okay? Let me show you one of the things that's very important. I'm going to go ahead and reset this back to where it was. Click OK. Uh, and I'm going to reset my view to put my elephant back straight up. I'm going to go to my brush tool, and I want you to see that it looks really small right now. That's because it's a very large picture. But let's say I had a very big brush. I'm going to make it really big here. That's the size of my brush, right? And if I wanted to paint, see it's painting, you know, the black that size. Now let's say you're working and all of a sudden you notice that no matter what you do, your brush always looks small. See, um, I can make a giant brush, but my brush cursor is always this small crosshair. If that's happening to you, chances are you have caps lock on. What caps lock does is it cycles between the normal brush and the precise mode. So if you have caps lock on, it's going to do this um, little tiny crosshair and you won't see how big your brush really is. I'm going to go ahead and do file revert to get my brush, my um, picture back to where it was. I'm going to hit control K and continue on. So back in cursors. So you might want to keep it on normal brush tip. Standard brush tip actually shows you a cute little thumbnail of a, whatever tool you're on. I'm going to leave it on normal. Uh, your transparency. Okay, here's what's going on here. The transparency grid is for things that are transparent because we can't, for some reason, make it to where we can look through our monitor. All right, I know, I know they haven't made transparent monitors yet, but they they're on it. I'm sure they're on it. Um, but anyway, the grid here is the way Photoshop represents transparency. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK for a second. I'm going to double click my background layer, which will turn that background layer into a standard layer. Okay, So now that it's a standard layer, it can be transparent. I'm going to switch to my eraser tool. I'm going to make my eraser tool very big. I'm going to erase. Now, what does this mean? This means that I have poked a hole on this, as if it was like a transparent piece of paper. Uh, this there there's a whole area here that is transparent and you can have different levels of transparency too so for example if I make my brush very soft and make it very large again here you can see that I can have levels of transparency so you see it's fading away now what's neat is you know you're looking at transparent and not a grid because when I zoom watch how the graph paper doesn't change sizes it's still you see the same size it's always that same size that's because it represents transparency well you can change that setting or change the colors inside the transparency and gamut you can change those colors and change the uh, size of the grid if you wanted to I'm gonna leave mine at where it is now the gamut warning is for when you're trying to figure out your colors from the computer and where you're trying to print out the colors from your computer printers can't print as many colors as a computer screen so 
sometimes Photoshop will show us that by, by showing a gamut warning. And gray is what the color is to show us the colors that aren't going to work. Uh, I'm going to leave that how it is. You can have rulers set up. You can have inches for your rulers and points for your type. Okay. Um, you can also change that to other things, like if you wanted to be exactly pixel aligned, like you were doing a web project, you'd want it to be based on pixels. If you're going to do a print project, you'd want to do inches. One thing you can't do here is feet. <laughs> it's kind of interesting there. No feet in there. Uh, let's see. There's a preset resolution for new documents. So it's going to be 300 pixels per inch, which is about what you'd want for standard prints that you would hold in your hand. You can change the screen resolution. Um, to a higher res as well. That might be used for people working on those new retina displays. But in our case, we're just going to leave it here. Uh, guides, grid, and slices. Um, these are things that help us align things on our page, and you can change the colors. Uh, they're obnoxious because they want you to have them stand out. Now, notice that when you make a grid or a guide, they don't actually show up. They, they don't stay in the picture when you print them or maybe show it online. It's just there for when you're working. You can add plugins. Um, you can add an additional plugins folder to add some more features. In my case, I'm not going to add anything there. They have type. You can have Asian text in, included in there. I'm just going to leave mine there. I'm going to go ahead and do 3D here. Now, 3D will also show you that you have OpenGL. If your video card isn't detected, this is another place that won't have it set up. So, anyway, this is... Um, all set up pretty much how I like it. I just was really concerned about I want to make sure that that shift is off and that in the file handling the maximize PSD is off. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I like those preferences. Let's go ahead and continue in the next video.